Hello and welcome to this Ultimate Radio Menu introduction video. The goal of this video is to help you get up and running with the Ultimate Radio Menu in your project as fast as possible. So in this video, we're gonna quickly go over a few aspects of the Ultimate Radio Menu. First, we're gonna go over how to create an Ultimate Radio Menu in your scene. Then once we do that, we're gonna go over the inspectors and how to customize the Ultimate Radio Menu. And then finally, we'll briefly go over the README and how you can get the most out of it. So to begin, let's create a ultimate radio menu in the scene. So the easiest way to do this is to go to the prefabs folder that's located in um, assets, tank and healer studio, ultimate radio menu, and then prefabs, and just pick whichever one you want and then drag it out into your scene and choose either if you want it in world space or screen space. Um, this will create all of the needed um, canvas and event system objects for your UI. And then from here, you'll be able to uh, customize it and everything is all set. The other way to create an ultimate radio menu is to simply right click in your hierarchy and do UI ultimate radio menu. And then it'll ask you that same question if you want it in screen space or world space, and then it will create an object with the ultimate radio menu on it. And from here, if we delete this one, from here you can see there's little scene gizmos to show how many buttons you want on it. Um, and then you can choose a radio menu style um, if you wanted something like that, or a specific sprite if you wanted that. So let's just go with the minimalist style, and then we can just generate it. So now um, we'll just work with this one, um, the one that we created from scratch, but now we'll go over the inspectors and their customization, and how to get it looking the way that you want. So each of the sections here are kind of divided up to help with a good workflow of the ultimate radio menu. So first thing is the positioning. So this is the positioning on the screen, um, the button size, radius, other things like that. Um, you can also change the overall angle um, and things like that. So first thing is let's just adjust our minimum range, maximum range, and get it kind of fit to the radial menu. You have other bunch of other options here. Um, for the overall menu size and stuff like that. So everything for that is in the radio menu positioning. Then for the radio menu options, this is the section where you're going to be able to choose what sort of options you want on the radio menu for icon or, or text or other things like that. So uh, the first thing, a menu toggle, is if it's enabled or disabled by default and if you wanna to toggle the menu over time. Um, when it enables, it takes a second for it to come up and other things like that. Then we have a pointer, which is a separate image that points towards the currently selected button. Um, and then we have menu text if you want a, a name or description text. And the nice thing about all these options is that they generate them for you um, if you don't have one already in your scene. So you can generate some name text to use um, for the currently selected button and even some description text um, so that it'll display the description of the item, whatever it is. Um, so you can do that from here. Um, then you can choose if you want a button icon or not. Um, so like if we create a button icon, change the icon size down, and then um, I'll just use a placeholder here so we can see what the icons look like on the radial menu itself. Um, you can also choose if you want button text um, as well um, for each button and how it would be positioned. So basically anything for the buttons overall is determined from here. Obviously color as well, if you wanted a different color for the buttons. Then the next section is button interaction. So this is how, um, when you're clicking on it or navigating around on it, how the buttons will interact. So you can change them to a different sprite. You can color swap them, scale transform. Um, you can even do those same things with the icon and the text um, if you want when they're being hovered. So we have normal, highlighted, pressed, selected, and disabled. So those are the different states and you can change all of these inside of here. Next is the radial button list, which is where you can uh, essentially customize every single button on here. If you wanted to do that, um, the radio menu is designed to be edited in code so that you add and remove buttons um, at runtime. But if you wanted a more static menu, you can do that all from here. So you can change uh, the icon to being, um, for example, we can come here and change this icon to a key and you can see we can update that. We can change the name to key and you can see that updates the text. So everything um, you can kind of customize every button from here. It's also worth noting that if the, the icon is a little bit different, we know that icons sometimes when you're making them, they can't all be the same size or ratio. So um, it actually allows you to do unique positioning per icon um, if you want it to be like that. 
And then the last section is the script reference section. So basically this is going to help you get the ultimate radio menu integrated into your scripts. And we'll go over this in a, in a later video. Um, but this is where you'll find a lot of the example code that you can just copy and paste right into your um, script. So it's pretty useful for that. All right. So the last thing that we want to go over is the readme file, which is most likely where you found the link to this video. So if we go back to the root ultimate radio menu folder, you'll see the readme. Um, and so in the getting started section, that's most likely where you found the link to the introduction video. Um, we have the overview section, which is um, goes over basically what we just did of what sections um, have what. There's a link to our video tutorials, Discord server, other things like that. But the documentation section is going to be really useful to know what sort of functions that you have available. There's even events down here so that you can get the most out of the ultimate radio menu. And we'll be going over this in a later video. Actually, in the next video, we're going to go over a very simple example of how to get the ultimate radio menu working in your own project and scripts. Um, so I think that's it for this introduction video. And let's get on to the next one.